Hello and thank you for watching this video about IPMI or how to hack a server that's actually turned off. My name is Johannes Ulrich and I am with the Sans Technology Institute. So let's talk a little bit about IPMI and what it really means. Well, IPMI stands for Intelligent Platform Management Interface, was defined by Intel. There are a couple different versions of it, and its goal is to get rid of these clumsy serial cables that we used to have to remote manage servers. Now, one of the great things about these serial remote consoles was they didn't really depend on any operating system running on the server. So we could get access to servers that were crashed. This is what IPMI allows us to do. IPMI depends not on the operating system. However, instead of the serial port, it uses Ethernet. In its simpler implementation, it's really just a serial over IP. Now, you don't necessarily need a dedicated Ethernet interface for it. If you have a motherboard with one Ethernet port, you can use that Ethernet port for IPMI as well as for all the other normal networking stuff that you do. Well, uh, what can you do with IPMI? You can, for example, power cycle the system. It does not necessarily rely on the CPU or the memory. It is a separate little piece of circuitry that's on your motherboard that implements IPMI and that's why it's working without actually having any power applied to the system. So you think, well, you still need to have it plugged in. You just don't need to have it turned on. But enough slides, let's look at a real system here. I do have a little uh, server micro box uh, that runs on an Atom CPU and actually implements IPMI. It's currently not plugged in. I do also have it connected to a little power meter. And if you look at the display right now, it shows there's no power being used. So let's uh, plug it in. And as soon as I plug it in, you probably do see that the network activity light is on and our system now uses about two to three amps or two to three watts, actually that's a display, two to three watts of power. If we turn the system around, you will also see in the front there is a second power, a second network activity LED, and that's also lit up just in the same way the one in the back at the network outlet is actually lit up. If I turn on the system, let me just do that now. You also notice and you'll hear the fans spinning up, and now we do have the power LED here in the front that's lit up. If I turn it off again, you notice the fan is now turned off. The network activity LED is still blinking, but the power LED is off. Next, let's try and run Nmap against the IPMI IP address. Now, the system is still turned off but connected to power. IPMI by default retrieves an IP address via DHCP. I earlier just went and did an Nmap scan on my entire network and found out that the IP address that IPMI uses is 10.5.0.2. 242 in my example. So I'm starting Nmap now. I'm using the dash A option, dash capital A option to get a little bit more information about the different services that may be running here. So it's running now and I'll actually jump ahead a little bit. And here we got the results of Nmap. Port 22 is listening with drop bear, a very common SSH daemon that's being used on minimum systems like that. Port 80 is running light 
HTPD. Again, very common for embedded systems. Same for 443. So we actually do have an SSL option here. We also have VNC running and then we have universal plug and play running. If we point our web browser to the IP address, what we get is this little login screen. So let's log in here, admin and the password. Of course, there are well-known default passwords for these login screens. Let's log in and see what we are able to do now. So we get a little console here. It gives us a little status uh, of the server, what firmware is running. We're able to power it on here. Let me go ahead and uh, power on the server. So I click that and you will hear in the background, the fan just uh, came on. If I refresh uh, this uh, preview image, it will actually then uh, show me updated screenshots as the server boots up. I can also, if I want to have a more interactive connection, you see here sort of the bias screen coming up. I can also just go here to remote control, console redirection. What this will do it, it will launch a little Java console that will give me essentially the same access I would have gotten via the good old serial console. So here we have uh, this uh, console pop up. It's just like a serial console. I'm now able uh, to log in here. And then let me just uh, reboot the system. to show you that we actually are able to see the entire reboot sequence. You may hear the fan again spin up as it's shutting down and sort of going through its self-test. So we do have exactly the same access to the system as we would have via uh, direct console access or via a serial console. And here you see uh, the boot up screen and then after a couple seconds, you will see the login prompt again. Anyway, so interesting feature, but how do we secure it? Now, you can, of course, turn it off if you want to. And uh, that's definitely recommended if you don't need this particular feature. But, uh, well... Um, it is an important feature in a lot of data center environments. So you really want to secure it rather than just turn it off. There are a number of access control methods you can use. You can, for example, use radius uh, to uh, provide access. We can use HTTPS instead of HTTP, which of course helps and we can actually upload valid SSL certificates if we want to. We then can also limit the users so we can add additional users. Of course, we definitely should change the default uh, password and uh, then we can change the port that's being being used for the different uh, services. We can also provide IP access control to only allow access from certain IP addresses. So there are a number of ways how you can somewhat secure it. However, I think the most important part is that you are aware that this feature actually exists on your system. So now, should you turn off IPMI? I wouldn't say you should do so right uh, out of the box. First, make sure that you don't need it in data centers. There is a legitimate use for IPMI. If you do need it, make sure you secure it. So use HTTPS, not HTTP. Use valid certificates, as you just saw, you're able to upload them. Use strong authentication, so the integration with the radius, for example, may make sense at the very least uh, change the passwords and set up individual accounts. And then turn off the remote admin modes that you don't need. So for example, if HTTPS is all you need, then you don't really need the VNC stuff, uh, but make sure that, for example, this Java console and such uh, still works the way you have to 
make it work. Uh, with the Java Java console, that's probably sort of one of the more dangerous uh, features there because it's essentially uh, VNC it uses uh, for access. You may want to turn that off because most of the time you don't need it. If you still leave the rest of IPMI working, so you still leave access via HTTPS, for example, enabled, then you can always uh, turn that feature back on if you need it. And then of course, limit access to a specific IP addresses. These are some of the basic hardening options that you have available here. I just want to point out that this is different from Wake on LAN. Wake on LAN is found a lot in desktop systems. Now, it doesn't mean that you don't find IPMI on desktop systems. In particular, if they're targeting enterprise environments, you may find IPMI on desktop systems as well. Wake on LAN is different in so far as that Wake on LAN uses an Ethernet frame, not IP, so it's not routable. It can only be used on the local network and typically the only thing you can do with wake on LAN is power on the system which of course is helpful because now you can power it on and then you can attack it but uh, still it's more limited to what you can do with IPMI. Well, with that, uh, thanks for listening. Again, isc.sans.edu, that's where we have lots and lots of other content. And my Twitter address, as usual, J-O-H-U-L-L-R-I-C-H. Thanks and bye.